Hey everybody, Thomas here. Got an interesting video here. The fine folks from Jerry's ReSharp. Now they're out of Kentucky and I've been wanting to work with them for quite a while and everything, but they did send us down three really interesting blades. Now I've run a Ripper S blade, which I got from SE Metals and I was extremely, extremely impressed with that blade. I have not run Ripper 37 blades before and there's a new blade on here I've never actually never heard of before. So again, Full truth in lending everything. I am not sponsored by anybody, but Jerry, uh, Jerry's ReSharp team, they did ask me, hey, can you test these blades out? I said, sure, send me two blades of each so that I can test and my dad can test. As you can see, we're at my dad's mill, his 2220 and everything. I'm also taking back uh, three blades with me up to Wisconsin. We'll be cutting those on my 2020 mill up there. Again, I like to do blade videos because we get to look at what's out there and also to help you, the consumer, the user of sawmills and everything, look for a uh, cost-saving alternative to buying blades from the actual sawmill manufacturer. There are some very high quality blades out there from a lot of different manufacturers. So far, I've been impressed with almost every single one of them that I've run. Uh, down there at Southeast Metals, they got some great blades from um, Casco, and I think they run that Ripper S and a few others and everything. And then over there uh, with Joe Main, he runs the Wood Miser Silver Tips and such like that. But over here at Jerry's ReSharp, they do have the Ripper 37s. And then this new blade right here, we're going to talk about that here in a second. I, at least I've never heard of it. I don't know if it is new or not. So let's go from left to right and we'll get up close with these in here in just a second and everything. The first blade that we have over there, that is the standard 10 degree Ripper 37. Let's go ahead get up here now <laughs> i'm trying to get where the shades on everything so see you can see ripper 37 on there and it's a 10 degree blade so what that means is you've got a 30 degree back angle and the face right here is 10 degrees this is an all-round great blade for cutting hardwood softwood stuff like that it's a little bit faster cutting you know the steeper that front angle is so in this fact, in this in this case here, 10 degree, it'll allow you to cut faster through that soft wood. But a 10 degree blade, if you could have only one blade to do everything, a 1030 blade is the blade to get. If you are using a wood miser sharpener and everything, they have those made up wheels that are, you know, the diamond wheels and everything. A 1030, if you run a 1030 blade, get that 1030 wheel, you can sharpen everything you want to. It'll cut absolutely everything. You start getting kind of specialized when you start changing that hook angle and everything but uh, a 1030 blade all in all my favorite go-to blade of all times this next blade we have right here this is a seven degree blade with a 30 degree back angle so it's the same back angle on the 10 degree as it is on this one right here but all it is is this face right here is recessed a little bit to the left now it's it's not quite as steep kind of hard to see so let's see so you look at that one there and you look at one of those there you really can't see three degrees but i can almost guarantee there's three degrees difference between the two uh long story short this is going to be a little more precision cutting i actually like the seven degree and eight degree blades or anything and my buddy mr robert and everything when he was running his cook sharpener he actually resharpened most everything back at an eight degree a 10 degree technically could cut faster, but I actually don't see a difference in speed between these two when they're cutting. But a seven degree, you have a little more, um, it's, it's less aggressive, if you will. So it, it can handle those wider cuts and those really hard species. So if you're cutting like your live oaks and your white oaks and stuff like that, I would choose a seven degree over a 10 degree. But again, there's really not a whole lot that most people can tell about the two. Uh, the next blade we have here is a little bit different and you can actually see the difference. I'm going to stack these two up. So if you look at those, the blade on top, focus, there we go. The blade on top, sorry, the blade on top has a much taller tooth and that's because that back angle is a 40 degree and that front angle is a seven degree. So it's got the same front angle as the one below it but the back angle it's it's steeper this is a taller tooth this is similar to the 747 that people run from wood miser and stuff like that it's a real tall tooth very sharp or anything they all very sharp but you can see that one's not as tall you look at this one you're like holy crap that tooth is just tall 
So a blade like this, I would strictly use a blade like this for cutting probably pine and stuff like that. I don't know if I'd necessarily want to run this to a whole lot of hardwood. Yeah, I would run this through the softer type hardwoods. This would be perfect for poplar. This would be perfect for maybe some sycamore and stuff like that, even cherry. Um, there's a couple different reasons for the higher tooth and everything. I, I hear people say that it uh, reduces the amount of sawdust left on the wood afterwards. There's a lot of different things, but uh, this is a very tall tooth. And this one here, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet. It's what they call the timber dog. So you can see the first one here is a 10 degree ripper. Then we have a seven degree ripper. And then we have the 740, which they call the timber dog. So there you have it. The three blades we're going to be testing out uh, today with this black walnut here. So you get a size of this black walnut. This black walnut is absolutely massive. Um, we're at 27 inches wide here and about two foot on the other side. Lengthwise on this, eight and a half foot, I think. Anyways, it's a big, big old piece of black walnut. Uh, the other bottom portion of this, the other five foot, we had to cut off because it does have fencing material through it. And I'm hoping and praying that we don't have any more in here. I do see something that's concerning down here. I do see a little bit of a, a spot right here. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a few cuts on this top side. I feel like the top side is nice and clean everything with one of these blades here. And I want to show you kind of the difference in cut quality between a blade that we've been using for a little bit and what these things look like. I am a big fan of the Ripper S blades, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be a big fan of Ripper 37s because I've only heard great things about these. And the folks at Jerry's ReSharp, uh, for what I hear, they're phenomenal folks. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to test this out and stay tuned hopefully uh we'll enjoy this so let's throw on the ripper 37 with a seven degree blade that's what we're going to try for right now and we'll see what the cut quality looks like Okay, so the blade has been changed out. We got that Ripper 37 seven degree blade on there and everything. We're gonna continue cutting on this black walnut. I'll continue to cut it down until about probably the last two cuts. I'm gonna be cutting it at two and a quarter inches. And we will look at the wood that we currently have on the ground here, which you can't see, and the blade we currently have on there. Now this is just the initial test of this blade. I've never run this blade and everything. I am running the tension a little bit higher. I'm running at about 1300 PSI. I usually run 1100 PSI, but at 1300 PSI, just because we're dealing with 28, 29 inch diameter cuts. So there you have it. We're going to go ahead and cut this. I'm very excited. This is going to be some gorgeous black walnut.
cutting absolutely like butter. As you can see, uh, just a few minutes into this, we've already cut four of those beautiful slabs. I think I'm gonna cut one more time and then I'm gonna switch out to the old blade because I just don't trust that black spot on there. The next cut's gonna incorporate the pit, as you see, and that one actually is probably gonna be cut in two or maybe it's like a river table or something to that effect. All right, we'll do one more cut on this right here and I'll throw the old blade back on just because I, I'm not trusting that section right there. I, I see discoloration. Discoloration seems like metal. And everyone's probably wondering, well, why doesn't he use his metal detector? Well, it's up in Wisconsin, which is completely opposite from what my last video was. Um, and my dad's metal detector is not working. It's saying there's metal everywhere. So something internally is wrong with it. So it's gonna do one more cut. Then we'll get some of these slabs off here, but this is absolutely cutting like butter. I'm watching the engine usage. I am like at 55% maybe. So I could cut faster. I think I'm cutting decent speed because I'm cutting over 30 inches around this section right here. Uh, and I do not see any deviation at all in that blade. I'm very, very excited about that because whenever you're cutting black walnut this size, you want to make sure your cuts are as, as pristine and as clean and straight as possible. All right, let's get over there, cut that one more slab out of there, and then uh, let's, let's see if we got some more metal in there. Okay, so there's six, and six or five. There's five beautiful slabs right there. They're all massive. We're gonna go ahead and take some of these off, take a look at them and everything. I'm gonna throw the old blade back on there. because I'm Like I said, I'm just not trusting that little black spot I'm seeing there. But yeah, it is cutting like butter, absolute butter. I cannot wait to see what these uh, cuts look like. So let's go ahead and throw these onto the forks. We'll get them out here into the sunlight. And you could uh, sit back, relax, and see some beautiful black walnut. Again, these are almost nine feet long. These are like eight and a half feet long. Absolutely gorgeous. The figure, the knots, everything kind of worked out the way that I was hoping it would work out and everything. But uh, man, that is like, that's just absolutely amazing there. Now we're gonna get these other ones here, done up here shortly, but uh, these were all cut at two and a quarter I think it was two and a quarter inches for all oh excuse me the last five slabs were cut at two and a quarter the first three were cut at roughly two inches thick uh gonna be beautiful the pith got a little bit of pith on this one not much just a little bit a little more pith on excuse me this one right here this one pretty much cut the pith right in half and this one as you can see it's already splitting i'm gonna have paul throw some water on the last four slabs here just a little bit there you go Oh yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Oh, uh, one short, <laughs> fail. <laughs> so yeah, but I mean, it's better than, <laughs> better than nothing. Absolutely gorgeous though. 
blown away. I cannot wait to get a picture of these. This will probably be the clickbait photo. Everyone's gonna click on it because they're gonna see, oh my goodness, that's massive, massive black walnut. And these ones, again, uh, most of them average out like over 24 inches wide. I can tell you this one right here is probably a little bit less. And this one right here that broke off, well, you can see it's breaking. Get up here nice and close. You can actually see there is a crack right here and it was getting pretty, pretty unstable as I was picking up everything and that's okay. I think I'm actually gonna bring that piece back with me to Wisconsin. I'll continue to break off that back piece there and then I'll make it a behind the sofa table. It just looks too good. It's got so much figure going on here. Absolutely amazing. All right, and there you have it. Uh, very impressed with the Ripper 37 saw, the, the blade there, excuse me. That blade performed like it was cutting through butter. But again, folks, please like, subscribe. These right here are gorgeous. We're gonna sell some of these and we're gonna work some of these. I'm just blown away at how good these look. So I wanna take some pictures and maybe this will be the clickbait to get you to click on this video. And I do ask, please like, subscribe to this video. Uh, if, if you like to do anything with sawmills or woodworking and stuff like that, or if you're interested in anything, check out my other videos where we talk about saw blades, we talk about blade tension, we talk about other sawmill manufacturers out there. And eventually, it'll be this winter, but I'll put a video together that kind of ranks out my favorite sawmills at each point, price point, if you will, because there's a lot of them out there. We've owned eight sawmills, and there's a lot of there's a lot of great ones out there. All right, we'll see you around. Thanks.